Most people hear the phrase compound interest and mentally switch off. They imagine dusty math from school, not something that decides whether their money crawls or explodes in growth. Miss this, and you could throw away 31 years of growth without noticing. By the end of this video, you will not just know the formula, you will know how the moving pieces actually work in real life, month by month, so you can make them work for you. Meet Harry. Harry answers tech support calls from his small apartment. He brings home $2,805.73 each month after tax. Savings felt impossible. By the time rent, food, transit, and a few late-night takeout orders left his account, he usually ended the month with maybe $40 sitting in checking. He had heard about compound interest. He even saw a calculator once that said a couple hundred dollars a month could turn into hundreds of thousands. It felt fake. Where did those big numbers come from? Early this year, Harry hit a wall. One Friday, his car declined at the grocery store with $12 of food on the belt. Payday was in three days. But that moment landed like a punch. He realized something simple and painful. If every month ends at almost zero, his money never gets a chance to grow. It is like planting a tree, then yanking it out of the ground every few weeks. That weekend, he pulled out an old book a friend had given him, The Simple Path to Wealth by J. L. Collins. The message was blunt. You do not need fancy strategies. You need time, a decent growth rate, and the discipline to leave the money alone. Then Harry read The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. Different author, same quiet theme. The people who end up wealthy are rarely the ones chasing the highest returns. They are the ones who stay in the game the longest. That is when the compound interest engine actually has time to work. Harry realized he did not understand the engine at all. So he gave himself one evening to break it apart. No big spreadsheets, just a notebook, a calculator app, and one clear question. If I can only spare $119 each month, how does that tiny amount turn into a big number? Where is the magic hiding? He decided to treat it like a little experiment. You can copy this experiment tonight with any number you can afford. First, he wrote one line at the top of the page. Simple interest is rent. Compound interest is growth. Simple interest is when your money gets paid only on the original amount. You put $1,000 in an account that pays 5% simple interest. Every year you earn $50. Year one, 50. Year two, another 50. Year three, still 50. Nice, but flat. The line never bends. Compound interest is different. With compound interest, the new interest gets added to the pile, and next time you earn interest on the bigger pile. Harry wrote a very small example. He imagined putting $100 into an account that grows by 8% each year. End of year one, he has $108. In year two, he does not earn 8% on the original 100. He earns 8% on 108. So the interest becomes $8.64. Tiny difference, but it keeps going. Each year, the base gets a little larger, so the interest payment gets a little larger too. Harry wanted to see the bend in real numbers, so he jumped forward. What happens if that same $100 sits there for 30 years at that same 8% growth rate? The math says it grows to just over $1,000. If he leaves it for 40 years, it grows to more than $2,000. Same starting amount, same rate, just a different number of years. That is the hidden heart of compound interest. Time is the lever. The longer the money stays invested, the more every extra year matters. That is the part most people miss. We tend to focus on the rate. Is this account paying 4% or 5%? Is this fund returning 8% or 10% on average? Rate matters. But there is another part of the equation quietly doing more work. Time. 10 extra years can beat a higher rate. Harry kept noticing the same regret from people older than him. I wish I started 10 years earlier. He did not want that sentence to be his future, so he built a simple two-column experiment. In the left column, he wrote Harry A. In the right column, he wrote Harry B, same person, same job, same life. The only difference was when each version of him started investing. Harry A starts at age 25. He invests $119 each month for 10 years, then stops, totally stops. No more contributions after age 35. Harry B does the opposite. He waits until age 35 to start. 
From 35 until retirement, he invests the same $119 every single month for 30 years. Harry used an average growth rate of around 7% per year to keep things realistic. By the time they both hit retirement age, the math is shocking. The early starter, Harry A., who only contributed for 10 years, ends with an account that is not far behind the late starter, who paid in for three full decades. Same monthly deposit, very different timelines. The reason is simple. Those early deposits from Harry A. get four extra decades of compounding. They become little snowballs that had more time to roll downhill. This is where compound interest math stops being abstract. The formula that you see in textbooks looks scary. Future value equals present value multiplied by a one plus rate raised to the power of time. You do not need to remember the symbols. You only need to remember what each word means. Present value is what you have now. Rate is how fast it grows each period. Time is how many periods you let it grow. The only thing you can control directly is how much you put in and how early you start. Harry circled the word time three times. He could not control the exact market return each year. He could not snap his fingers and double his salary overnight. But he could control when the first dollar went in and how often he repeated that move. So he built a small, slightly strange system Instead of promising himself a fixed amount every Friday or every month, he tied his investing to a pattern he could feel. Every time he worked an extra late shift and his pay was higher than usual, he skimmed off the extra. If his pay was $200 above his usual baseline, 137 of that went straight into his investment account before he even saw it in checking. On quiet months, he still aimed for the floor of 119. He did not always hit the exact numbers, but he kept the pattern. Baseline contribution, plus a slice of every little raise or overtime bump. The first three months felt boring. He watched tiny amounts leave his checking account. He saw almost nothing happen inside the investment account. At the end of month three, his total contributions added up to $357. The account showed $369, $12 of actual growth. This is the point where most people quit. They try investing for a few months, maybe a year. They see a few dollars of gain and a few dollars of loss. It all feels pointless. That is because they are standing too close to the picture. Compound interest works like watching your hair grow. Day to day, nothing changes. Then suddenly you realize you need a haircut. Harry promised himself he would not judge the experiment until he had 12 full months on the page. Month after month, he added his contributions and wrote the new balance by hand. Some months, the market dropped. His balance dipped even after he added money. Other months, it jumped more than he expected. By month 12, he had put in roughly $1,400 of his own money. The account showed around 1520 80 or so dollars of growth on paper, still not impressive at first glance. Here is where the rule from those books came back. The first few years of compounding look tiny. Most of the heavy lifting happens later. If you chop down the tree in year three because it looks thin, you never see what it was about to become. So Harry zoomed out. He played with a long-term projection. What happens if he keeps investing around $119 every month from his mid-20s until his mid-60s and the account averages around 7% growth? The math says his total contributions over 40 years will be in the ballpark of $57,000. The final account value could land somewhere around three times that number, depending on the exact path of returns. That difference between what you put in and what you end with is pure compound growth, not magic. Just math plus time plus consistency. Here is the best reveal that changed how Harry thought about the whole thing. It was not the high return years that mattered most. It was the fact that those high return years were happening on an already large base. Take two years back to back. Year one, his account is small. It grows by 10% and adds maybe $150 in growth. Nice. Year two, two decades later, the same 10% might add $10,000 in one year. Same percentage, very different dollar amounts. The engine did not change. The size of the engine did. There is another side to this rule. Compound interest works just as ruthlessly in reverse with debt. If you carry a balance on a high interest card, the same math is working against you. Interest adds to the balance. 
Next month, you pay interest on a bigger balance. That is why a few thousand dollars of credit card debt can quietly double if you only make minimum payments. It is the same formula wearing a different mask. Harry used this realization to build one personal rule. Never let compound interest work against him longer than one month. If he ever had to carry a card balance, his next mini-project became killing it before another cycle of interest could pile on top. He treated high-interest debt like his hair catching fire. Short, sharp sprints to put it out. Slow, calm breathing when planting money into investments. So, how do you use all of this without getting lost in formulas? Start with three simple moves. First, pick a small starting amount that feels almost silly. Maybe it is $29 each month, maybe it is 83. Small is fine. The key is that you can keep doing it even when life feels busy. Second, decide where that money will live. For long-term growth, it that could be a simple low-cost index fund inside a retirement account or a basic investment app. You want a place where your money can ride the long-term growth of many companies at once, not sit in cash forever. Third, give the experiment a private deadline, not one month, not three. Pick a minimum of one full 12-month stretch where you promise yourself you will not judge the results day by day. Write down each deposit. Glance at the balance once a month, not every hour. By the end of that first 12 months, the numbers on the screen will still look modest. That is normal. Remember, the interesting part of the graph lives much later. The point of year one is not to get rich. It is to get the machine running and to prove to yourself that you can feed it. Harry is now three years into his experiment. His total contributions add up to just under $5,000. His account balance recently crossed $5,900. Roughly $900 of that is growth. That is still not life-changing money. But here is what did change. He no longer feels like his dollars vanish at the end of each month. He sees them as little workers he has hired. Every deposit is another worker clocking in. Every extra month they stay on the job, the more they can do. You do not need to become a math expert to make compound interest work for you. You only need to respect the three moving parts, amount, rate, and time. You control the amount you feed in, you choose the kind of investment that sets the rough rate. Then you fiercely protect the time. Start earlier than feels comfortable. Forget about perfect timing. Let your future self be the one who looks back and says the sentence Harry wanted to avoid. I am glad I started when it still felt small.